Leave your comfort. Leave your comfort. Leave your family. Leave your tribe. Leave what you know. Move out into the world. Why? Because you could have the glorious adventure of your life instead of the infantile satiation that has encompassed you. And then you might say, well, how do you have the glorious adventure of your life? And I would say that you discover that in responsibility. And I would say further that that's not something that we have been communicating well for decades. We're torn apart with concerns about identity and what does identity mean and we insist at every moment that our identity is to be found in the instantaneous gratification of every possible hedonistic whim knowing full well that a pathway that's marked out by nothing but that self-serving hedonism is destined to despair and catastrophic failure well the first thing i think you need to understand is that these people that you're comparing yourself to you don't really know very well you know, and um, what that means is that you see their shiny outside, but you don't see the reality of their life. You know, maybe you're in California, see someone speeding down the road in a in a convertible Porsche, and you think, oh man, what a lucky bastard. And um, the truth of the matter is that he's thinking about wrapping his expensive sports car around the next cement pillar that he comes close to. You know, you, you can't tell, and people have hard lives, and and even people who are comparatively fortunate have hard lives. And so the, the ideal that you're observing that makes you jealous and resentful is in large part an illusion that's created by your own mind. You trust people because you're courageous. That's why. It's the same reason that you're grateful. It's a mark of courage. It's a mark of commitment. It's like you and I, we're going to make an agreement and you're full of snakes and so am I. And there's lots of ways this can go sideways. But we're going to put together an agreement. We're going to articulate it out. We're going to try to find something that is of mutual benefit to both of us. We're going to put our hands out and shake. And we're going to try to stick to that. And we're going to risk trusting each other. Right? It's a risk. I don't think that there is any other natural resource than trust. And for trust, you need courage. If you say the truth and and nothing else you'll have an immense adventure as a consequence. You won't know what's going to happen to you, and you have to let go of your clinging to the the outcome. You have to let go. But the truth will reveal the world the way it's intended to be revealed, and the consequence for you will be that you'll have the adventure of your life. And the other part of that ethos is this, and it it makes perfect sense to me. I, I can't see how it can be any other way, which is that Whatever makes itself manifest as a consequence of the truth is the best possible reality that could be manifest, even if you can't see it. In a boxing uh, establishment, the capacity for aggression is something that's not only allowed but developed, but it's brought under control. You know, And I think that sophisticated psychologists understand and sophisticated people understand that you don't make men harmless by making them weak you make them useful and responsible by helping them bring their capacity for mayhem and aggression under long-term conscious careful control and that's part of the respect you know i mean one of the things about boxing and this is true of any sport i would say is that you have to learn to take a blow and you have to learn to control your temper and so and that's a big deal because a lot of aggression violent aggression aggression goes astray when it's impulsive and all the men that i've met who were who who were worthy people had a tremendous capacity for aggression but it was contained and controlled and so then they could use it carefully and voluntarily when it needed to be used and it gave them a certain amount of i would say dignity but it also was part of what made other people around them respect them very very rapidly you learn things painfully when you learn something painfully a part of you has to die that's the pain you know when a dream is shattered for example A huge part of you that that constituted that dream, maybe even the biological substrate of that dream, has to be stripped away and, and burned. Life is a constant process of death and rebirth. And to participate in that fully is to allow yourself to be redeemed by it. And so the good 
is that process of death and rebirth voluntarily undertaken it's like you're not as good as you could be so you let that part of you die and if someone comes along and says you know there's some dead wood here man it needs to be burned off you think well that stuff's still a bit alive when that burns it's gonna hurt it's like yeah well no kidding but maybe the thing that emerges in its place is something better and I think this is the secret of human beings this is what we're like but uh, but there's a hell of a lot more to you than you think like way more enough to cope with the trouble of the world inside you there's enough to cope with the trouble of the world Mm -hmm. and you if you had enough courage you could let that out enough courage and faith you could you could let that out and everything would be better because of it really really and so that's a good that's a good story and it's also true and so I'm trying to tell that story if you take people and you expose them voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of you know that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals their self-defined goals if you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of they get stronger and you don't know what the upper limits to that are because you might ask yourself if for 10 years if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do what would you be like? Now, because people think that the purpose of memory is to remember the past. And that's not the purpose of memory. The purpose of memory is to extract out from the past lessons to structure the future. Go do something. Do the best thing that you can think of. Put the best plan you have into practice. It's not going to be perfect and it will change along the way. But it will change partly because you become disciplined pursuing the path. And as you become disciplined, you become wiser. And as you become wiser, you become able to formulate better and better plans. If you dare to do the most difficult thing that you can conceptualize, your life will work out better than it will if you do anything else. Well, how are you going to find out if that's true? Well, it's a Kierkegaardian leap of faith. There's no way you're going to find out whether or not that's true unless you do it. So no no one can tell you either because... Just because it works for someone else, I mean, that's interesting and all that, but it's no proof that it'll work for you. You have to be all in in this game. And so the idea is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's like, that's actually a fairly important caution when you're talking about not having to pay attention to what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. It's like, what it's essentially saying is that those problems are trivial in comparison. And the probability is that if you manifest yourself properly in the world, that those things will come your way is extraordinarily high. And I believe, I believe that that's exactly right. You cannot have proper respect for yourself until you know that you're a monster because you won't act carefully enough. You know, if you think, well, I'm a nice person, I'd never do anyone any harm. It's like, you're no saint. You can be sure of that. And the harm that you do people can come in many, many ways. And so, If you regard yourself as harmless, inoffensive, nice, well, why do you have any reason to be careful? You're like a teddy bear sitting on a shelf. Even if you throw it at someone, no one's going to get hurt. But that isn't what you're like, because you're a human being, and human beings are some vicious creatures. If you become a better person, then you start to be good for things, you know? You can fix problems. You, You can handle a funeral. You can handle a difficult situation, you know, and so it's not only that it's psychologically meaningful to pursue the highest of goals and the development of your character, but it's also the best possible thing that you can do practically here and now in the material world to make it less terrible than it might otherwise be. Jordan Peterson's advice for young men emphasizes personal responsibility, self-discipline, and striving toward meaning in life. He often stresses the importance of setting goals making your bed each morning as a simple act of order, and standing up straight to convey strength and confidence. Peterson argues that life is inherently full of suffering, but through responsibility and purpose, one can find meaning and avoid a life of nihilism or resentment. He also encourages men to speak truthfully and face life's challenges head on rather than avoiding discomfort. Peterson's philosophy draws from a blend of psychology and existentialist thought particularly ideas from Carl Jung and Nietzsche about confronting chaos and developing one's potential. By taking control of their own destiny, young men can improve themselves, help their communities, and contribute to society in a meaningful way. What do you think about Peterson's approach? Do you find it empowering or perhaps challenging? Share your thoughts.